Did you hear about the woman who got arrested at the Delhi airport for allegedly ghosting her husband's family after they spent 20 lakh rupees to send her to Canada? This isn't just one isolated case. It's a pattern we are seeing more and more. Is this betrayal or is there more to the story of the so-called IELTS brides? Let's dive into the reality behind these headlines. In Punjab, there is a mad rush to go to abroad, especially to countries like Canada. Young men from rural areas dream of building a life overseas, but they often struggle to meet the strict requirements for migration. This is where the IELTS Brides comes. The IELTS is an English proficiency exam that becomes the golden ticket for many families. Typically, it is the girls who excel in those exams and suddenly they have become the most sought after candidates for marriage. In fact, some of these boys and their families actively scout for girls who have passed the IELTS exam. They actually go to all the centers to find them, hoping that it will pave the way for their own immigration dreams. Here's how the trend is unfolding. Once these women clear the IELTS exam, they become the key players in a deal that transcends caste and class in India. Families approach them with marriage proposals, offering to sponsor the education in countries, as I mentioned, like Canada. The idea is simple. She goes first, and once she gets settled, she sponsors her husband's visa. It is less about love and more about securing a pathway to migration. This dynamics is reshaping the societal norms in India, where class divisions and caste systems have traditionally influenced marriage choices. While the narrative often paints this woman as opportunist who ghost their families once they reach abroad, the truth is far more nuanced. For many of these women, passing the IELTS exam isn't just a ticket to Canada. It's a shot at freedom. Freedom from rigid societal norms and limited prospects back home. In some cases, they choose not to call their husbands once they are done with their immigration and once they reach Canada, not because they are ungrateful, but because they face often unexpected challenges. They often struggle to adapt to a new culture or simply find a newfound sense of independence. So what's really happening here? These marriages, they shake up the societal norms and raise deeper questions about migration. It raises questions about the gender rules and actually it really shows the focus to the lack of opportunities back in India. For many women, this arrangement becomes a way to carve out their independence. For others, it might feel like exploitation dressed up as opportunity. Meanwhile, countries like Canada, which prides itself on diverse immigration policies, are left to navigate the influx of immigrants who may not necessarily fit the intended criteria for skilled migration. So what kind of immigrants are countries like Canada really getting out of this kind of situations? Are they genuinely receiving individuals who can contribute to the economy? Or is this merely a loophole in the system? So what's your take on this? Are these women simply seizing their one shot at freedom? Or are they actually exploiting a system that desperately needs reform? Share your thoughts in the comments and make sure to follow for more stories that reveal the realities beneath these headlines.